Doses calculations are something that every nursing student either loves or dreads. We all have to pass math exams every semester. It's either easy points or makes you nervous wreck. If you're the second type, I hope this little explanation helps a little bit. Because after all, at NRSNG, we believe that nursing school shouldn't be so hard. So there's four main types of questions you're gonna get. You're gonna get drip rate or drops per minute, total infusion time, three is dosage, and four is IV pump rate, always in milliliters per hour. So let's talk through the basics of how to do each of these types of calculations. So calculating drip rate, while not used very much anymore, if your power goes out or uh, if, you're, if you have to calculate it manually for some reason, if your pumps go out, you can actually calculate your drip rate based on information you have about the patient and the medication they're supposed to be giving. Information you need for this formula are your volume, your drip factor, which would be on the medication, volume would also be on your medication, how long the medication should be going for, and then that's gonna tell you how many drops per minute you should see going through that uh, medication chamber. So let's just do an example. Let's say you have to administer 200 milliliters of a medication over two hours or 120 minutes. So right here, our thing tells us it also needs to be a minute, so we're gonna say 120 minutes, all right? The drip factor is 15 drops per milliliter, so 15. So just from the problem there, we got everything that we need to do this, okay? We've broken this down to a basic algebra problem. You know, the problem is word problems. Even as little kids, we're all scared of word problems, but very quickly, we're able to break this down to exactly what we need. So all we gotta do is 200 times 15 over 120. It's a very simple problem. And once you have that all worked out, you can see that your answer actually comes to uh, 25 drops per minute. So then you just go to your patient, plug them up to their IV, start the chamber and just start calculating 25 drops per minute, okay? So you're gonna use your roller camp to titrate that, okay? You think that it's approximately about one drop every two seconds. So you start looking every two seconds, am I getting a drop? One, 1,000, two, 1,000, was that a drop? And then you kind of uh, go with it for, for a whole minute and make sure you're right. So to find infusion time, again, I don't want you to, to think this is too confusing. All you're gonna do is look at how much do I have to give and how fast does it go? And then I'm gonna know very quickly how long it would have taken to give that. So a problem you might get for this is how long would it take to infuse 400 milliliters at 75 milliliters per hour? So how long would it take to infuse 400 milliliters at 75 milliliters per hour? If we do that math there, what we get, maybe you have a calculator out, is you get about 5.33. 33 going on forever. So, which comes out to about five and a third hour, or about five hours, 20 minutes. Okay? So this is how we kind of work these problems out. So the nurse is infusing a bolus of normal saline. She starts the bolus at 2 p.m. and will run for 500 milliliters at 200 milliliters per hour. At what time will it be completed? So that's not really a trick question, okay? It's just kind of changing the way that everything's worded. So we'll still divide total volume to be infused over the rate in milliliters per hour. So total volume to be infused is 500 divided by 200 is about two and a half. So just find out what time two and a half hours later is. So in this case, let's say it's 4.30 or whatever. Third, let's do another example. To determine a dose or volume to be administered. So dosage to be administered would be our bottom example here. So to figure out a dosage to be administered, you need to know the desired dose. So how much do we actually wanna give? Okay, how much do we actually wanna give of this medication? The available dose, so how is it packaged? Okay, and how is that dose available or also known as concentration? So this is really kind of what uh, is on our packaging. Okay, so how much we want to give versus how is it, how is it given? Okay, that's really all we have to do with that. So let's say, let's do, let's do an example here. A nurse needs to administer 20 mil equivalents of KCL, okay? 
So that's what that's what that's what the provider has ordered. The the, the, the patient needs 20 mil equivalents of KCL. We go to our medication closet, we pull out the KCL, it's available in 40 mil equivalents in 30 mils of liquid. So what we have is 40 mil equivalents in 30 mLs. Okay? So now we just start plugging numbers in. We know what we want to give is 20 mil equivalents. What we have is this. Okay, so how do we get how do we get 20 mil equivalents out of 40 and 30? Okay, that's all we need to know. So our desired dose is 20. Just plug that in there. Okay, divided by the available dose, which is 40, and that 40 is suspended in 30. Okay, so we have mil equivalents, mil equivalents and milliliters. So then our mill equivalents cancel out and it's going to tell us exactly how many milliliters uh, we're going to administer there. And if we go ahead and do that math, what we end up with is 15. And that's milliliters, okay? That's what that's telling us. Okay, so let's do one last example. The only one we haven't done here is infusion time. So for our last example, we'll figure out infusion time. So we want to find the rate to set a pump. You need to find the total volume to be infused in a certain amount of time divided by and, and divide volume by hours. This one may require a few extra steps to find total volume or dose, which is the problem we just did. Once you've calculated the volume required, simply divide that over total time in hours to get milliliters per hour. Here's an example. Okay, let's make sure we have some space here. So here's an example. The nurse is to administer one gram of vancomycin over two hours. The bag contains two grams of vancomycin in 500 mils. Okay. So we need one gram of bank. Obviously you wouldn't write it like that, but you need to do one gram of bank and you need to do that over two hours, okay? In two hours. So I'm just kind of writing out all my information. The bag that we have is two grams of bank in 500 mils. Okay, so how are we gonna do this, okay? So first, how much total volume is required? If you have two grams in 500 mils, then one gram is 250 mLs. 